Yeah, that, uh, that is the question that I definitely get asked the most. How do I get into the CIA, right? Everyone thinks there's um, some sort of back door or something like this, or I'll put in a recommendation for them. And uh, the reality is there is no back door into the CIA. There just isn't. And I don't know if that's a Hollywood thing or people have watched The Recruit too many times with Al Pacino and they think somebody's going to come up to you while you're a bartender named Colin Farrell and do a magic trick with a, uh, with a newspaper. But the reality is there's not. And uh, they don't actively recruit you like that. Uh, the way to get in is to apply online. It's as simple as that. Um, and they'll tell you that if you go to a CIA information session at a university, uh, they'll tell the students, you know, if you're a senior and you're about to graduate, apply online, you know, read up on each position and they'll tell you exactly, I mean, not exactly, but very explicitly what that position does and what's expected of them and what they're looking for. So, you know, when people ask me, and it's clear that they haven't even been to CIA.gov, uh, and they're asking me, what does the CIA want? I just direct them to the actual website, which will tell you what the qualifications are, what the expectations are, and pretty, pretty definitively what that job entails. Uh, you know, and so I think one of the biggest things, if you're looking to get into the CIA, the first thing you need to do is forget everything you've heard prior to beginning your own research and then do your own research. Forget what you learned from Jason Bourne or James Bond or Homeland or any of that. Just wash that out because there's so much like fictitious information about the CIA online that it muddies the water for what's real. And the CIA itself is trying to tell you like, this is what a case officer does. This is what a desk officer does. This is what an analyst does. And a point to make there is, you know, the CIA is very different in that it's very secretive by its nature. But I think as a society, we've come to terms with not everyone in the Navy is a Navy SEAL. And so not everyone in the CIA is a spy, okay? I mean, that's important to point out in that there's a lot of different job titles in the CIA. Um, so not everyone's a field operative and, uh, not everyone's an analyst. You know, those are very different jobs. You still work for the same organization. Uh, but you know, look at a big corporation, not everyone is in sales. Somebody might be in engineering and so on. So that's important. Uh, you know, a lot of college students ask me what degree should I pursue or which language should I pursue and what makes me a more, um, attractive candidate. I get asked that a lot, those words. That must be like the, uh, the key phrase that's taught. Um, but I, again, you need to learn a foreign language, travel overseas. The more you do of both, uh, the better your odds are because they're going to look at your resume and that's what they're going to look for first. So, you know, you could say, hey, uh, I have a 4.0. I studied sociology at Harvard and you know magna cum laude well okay how many countries have you been to canada how many foreign languages do you speak spanish mm, okay you know whereas there could be somebody who has like a 3.1 who went to a state school and uh speaks three foreign languages and has been to 60 countries they're definitely going to be more attractive to the cia than the the harvard uh, student. And um, so, yeah, I, I can't be repetitive enough on, on that. It's very simple. Those are the two things that they really, really want. And they're going to instill in you the other things that they want you to become because there really isn't any degree in espionage. I have a lot of students who will come to me and say, well, I have a master's in international affairs. Everyone starts at zero the first day that they get into the CA. That's just the nature of the business. 